In Project 2, we're going to create a multiple page story document. And in the process, we're going to create our own custom page styles. We're going to set this document for two-sided printing, which means on the right side pages, we need a little extra margin for binding. And on the left side pages, we also need a little extra margin for binding. Let's take a look at this sample document using the book view option and then let's zoom way out so that you can see the four pages in this example. You'll see we start with a right-sided page with a wider margin on the left followed by a left-sided page with a wider margin on the right and we alternate these margins so that we have space for binding when we print the book in two-sided mode. We're also going to use a title paragraph style and we're going to add footers and headers. We'll just put the headers on the left side or even pages. We'll put the footers on all the pages. Let me zoom back in so you can see those. I'll go back to single page view then I'll use my zoom control to zoom in. You can see that in this sample I've used filler text just to show how things are going to be arranged. Here's a footer and in the footer we're going to insert page number and page count. And in the header we're going to insert the title of the document. In this project we're also going to insert some graphics and you'll see how we can wrap the text around the graphics Sometimes the graphics might be on the left side of the page and sometimes they might be on the right side of the page. So let's go ahead and open a new LibreOffice document and get started. Well, I've opened up a new LibreOffice Writer document. I've gone ahead and I've used the File Save As option to choose a location for the document and enter a name. I'm going to start this document by entering a title on the first line. And once I've entered my title text, I'm going to use the paragraph style and select title. And then I'll press the enter key to start a new paragraph. In my system, the title paragraph style is always followed by a subtitle style. I'm not going to use a subtitle in this document so I'm going to change that to the text body style. In order to format this document I'm going to add some filler text and to do that I'm going to go to the Internet and I'm using the link that appears in the printed version of this project and that opens up a text generator using something called Lorem Ipsum. Lorem Ipsum is a filler text that's been used for decades by printers to space things out before they have the actual text. I'm going to use Control A to select all the text in this generator and then I'm going to copy it by using Control C then I'm going to go back to my document and I'm going to say edit paste special paste unformatted text and when I do that it'll use the current paragraph style which in this example was text body the imported text had a lot of extra paragraphs I'm just going to go through here and delete those and in order to format this document, I need to have at least four pages of text. So I'm going to double click on the first word, shift click at the end, and control C, copy that text, go to the end here, and paste it. And paste it again. If you watch down here, you see I have two pages so far. I'm going to keep doing that 
pasting until I have at least four pages in my document. And now I'm going to use the old control home trick to put my text cursor back at the beginning of the document. At this point you can see that we're using the default page style in the sidebar once I select page styles I'm going to select all styles and in the all styles list of page styles you'll see that there are already some page styles there watch what happens if I click anywhere in the first page and then double click on the right page style with the cursor anywhere in that page notice that now I'm using the right page style let me scroll down and put the cursor in page 2 and you'll notice that that's using the left page style so the page style includes information about what style will happen automatically when you get to the end of a page well I don't want to use these styles that came with the system. I want to create my own custom page styles. Um, so in the page style sidebar I'm going to change to custom page styles and you'll see that there's nothing there. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select new and that will open up the page style dialog box. I'm going to create a page style named my right page And for the next style, I'm going to select my right page. I'm going to have to come back and change this after I've created my left page. But first, let me complete the right page style. I'll select the page tab. I'm using 8.5 by 11 portrait. And the margins, I'm going to make the left margin be 0.75. and 0.5 for the right top and bottom margins. I'm going to turn the header on and I'm going to turn the footer on and then say OK. There are a lot of other tabs for different page style options but this is all we're going to use in this project. In later projects we'll visit some of these other style options. I'm going to select OK I'm going to go back to the custom page styles area, right click again, select new, and this time I'm going to invent my left page. But this time the next page style is going to be my right page. Once again I have to go in and check the, the page format, size, portrait. This time I'll make the right margin be larger. Once you've entered something in one of these boxes, you can press the tab key to jump to the next box. Again, I'm going to turn on the header, turn on the footer, and say OK. Then I'm going to go back to the My Right Page style, right click on it, select Modify, and in the Organizer tab, I'm going to have the next style be my left page. Now with the cursor in the first page I'm going to double click on my right page style and you see down here that now I'm using the my right page style and if I go to page 2 you'll see I'm using my left page style and this automatically alternates now all the way through the document. If I use the tools down here and go to the book view option and zoom way out, you can check to see if the page formatting as far as margins left and right is what you would like to have. 
So back to the single page view, back to zooming in a little bit. Next I'm going to go to the footer on the first page and I'm going to insert a page number. But first I'm going to type some text. Page, space, and then I'm going to use insert field, page number, then I'll put a space, the word of, a space, and then I'll insert the page count. Now you notice here that the number, the page number, and the page count are shown shaded. That's because these are inserted fields and I cannot edit this. I could not go in here and change that 4 to a 6 or anything because I've inserted a field and the field takes control of the numbering. You also may notice that in this footer I have set the alignment to center. Sometimes you would like to have the footer on one side or the other side of left pages and right pages. In this document I'm going to use the center alignment. Now I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to copy it with control C. I'm going to go down to page 2, control V, and notice that the inserted field automatically updates that. Also notice if I scroll down to page 3 it continues with automatically inserting the page number because it's an inserted field. I would like to insert something for the header on the even pages. I'd like to insert the document title but I cannot do that until I've actually created it. So I'm going to go to File Properties and there's a general tab, there are several tabs here in the description tab under title I'm going to enter my story and say OK. Now in the page 2 header once again I'm going to insert a field but this time I'm going to insert the title field and I'm going to align that to the center. And that's on page 2. Actually it's on my left page and that will be that header will be on all the left pages. No header has been defined for my right page but if I go to another left page the header is there. Now I've done a little bit of work here and I don't want to do too much work without saving my document. And I could either use File, Save, but I'm not going to change the name of it. I'm going to keep the name My Story. I can use File, Save, or Control S, or notice that this little down arrow, this little tool on the toolbar is a save tool. Notice the color of this tool. When I select that save tool, the color will change, showing me that this version has been saved. There's a duplicate of this tool down here on the bottom part. This is also a shortcut tool. And if I hover on that, you'll see the document has not been saved since the last edit. If I do something as simple as putting in one space here, you'll notice that that changes because this document has not been saved since the last change. The next topic to explore is inserting images. I'm going to put the cursor anywhere in the first paragraph and I'm going to use from the toolbar, I'm going to use the insert image tool and that opens up the insert image dialog box. And now I have to find an image that I would like to use. In my system, I have in the pictures folder, 
a number of folders that have different images. Uh, let's see here. I think that I'll use something from my 1920 by 1080 picture collection. You can use any picture you like, and if you don't have an image, there's instructions in the text version of this project on how you can find a standard Windows image. Well, let's see. Today I think I'm in the mood for apple blossoms. And so we open that image, and you'll notice that that image fills the whole area. I don't want it to be that large. So I'm going to double click on that image and that will open up the image dialog box. And if I go to the type tab, there's a place that shows me the width and the height of the image. And I'm going to toggle the keep ratio option on and then I'm going to change the width to 2.5 inches and that automatically changed the height. I want to make sure that I'm anchoring this image to a paragraph and I want it to be positioned not in the center of the line but I want it to be positioned on the right side of that paragraph. Then I'm going to select the wrap option and I'm going to have the text wrapped before the image and I want a little bit of spacing between the text and the image. I'm going to select the borders option and I'm going to select the all four borders option on and maybe I'll put a drop shadow to the bottom right of this image and let's say OK and see what happens. So now you see that the image is justified to the right, there's a drop shadow and it's the size I want. Let me add another image, maybe in this paragraph. This time I would like to get an image off of the internet. So let me go to the browser. I'm going to go to the Google Images page and then I'm going to enter some word, oh, maybe tree, and see what happens. I get a large collection of different kinds of trees to pick from. Well, there are so many to choose, I don't know what to do. Now, I don't want to copy this image. This is a thumbnail version of the tree. I'm going to select that by left-clicking, and over here, I can see the size of that image is 4,000 by 2667, a lot larger than I need. Let me try another one. See if I can find one here that might be smaller. Um, by the way, there's some related search options here for different kinds of trees and you can see the source of each one of these images. Let me look up cartoon trees and just for fun let's choose um, this uh, what, what looks good doesn't matter let me use this clip art library tree and over here it's huge I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to copy the image and I'm going to go back to my document place the cursor in the paragraph where I want to insert the image and do the old control V the paste trick and there's my image. By default it centered it on the page. I don't want to do that. I'm going to double click on the selected image under type. I think I'll make this oh maybe just an inch and a quarter this time 1.25. I'm going to anchor it to the paragraph. I'm going to position it to the left. I'm going to wrap the text after the image with some spacing and in this case I'll use a border again and again I'll insert I'll add a shadow by the way when you select the border there are different styles different line styles you can use for the border there's also 
colors and there's also width. I'm going to choose the default sizes. Similarly with the shadow style you can change the color, you can change the distance. I'll accept the defaults for now. And now you see that the text is wrapped around that image. I think that I would like a little more spacing between the image and the text. I'll double click on that image again and I'm going to go back to the wrap size and to the right I'm going to increase the spacing between the right size and the text. Let's just see what this looks like. So you see what has happened. I can adjust the spacing between the image and the wrapped text. There's another thing I can do with these images. Let me double click on this first image. Let me go to the borders tab and you notice that there's something called padding. I'm going to increase the padding here to be oh, 1.12 and in this example all of the padding sides, left, right, top, bottom, are the same because the synchronized option is turned on. If you turn that on, you can have different amounts of padding on the different sides. Well, let's see what the padding actually does to our image. You see it's added padding between the border of the image and the image itself. So there are a number of controls you have once you have inserted an image into your document. So you can see now you have enough information to create a custom story, a multiple page custom story with custom page styles where you can set the margins for whatever you want. In this case we did it for double sided printing. You've also seen how you can insert images and use the text wrap feature to wrap the text around the images and there are options for wrapping the text to be before, after, through, parallel, none. And once you've gotten a ways into this, you should go back, double click on these images, and look at all the options you have in the image dialog box. Experiment a little bit. You'll find some things that will help you enhance your story documents. Thank you.